Hi, this is Eric Martin from Porking Geek. I'm here with Matt Shoemaker from Hit Him With The Shoe. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> looking at Bee Lives, We Will Know Only Summer, because of course you're going to die. That's exactly right. At the yeah. end of summer. <laughs> That's right. Summer is not a happy time for bees, I have to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, I'll uh, start explaining the game a little okay. bit. Okay. That's right. That's to look forward to. Yeah. You're going to die. That is right. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, the game takes place in two theaters, and the first one is right here. Uh, this is your hive. We're set up here for two players in about the third turn of the game, okay. um, just for some teaching purposes. Okay. So, uh, this is a resource management and worker placement game. So, the main part of the board is right here. Uh, we have our bee workers on the left. There are five main resources in the game, your workers being one of them, because you can sacrifice them as well as take actions with them to do certain things. Okay. The next thing in the game over here is our cone. This is the amount of space that you have to actually store these resources. And this is very important because uh, resource management, or the resource management game obviously is a big part of it. How many you have, that affects when you're going to swarm, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, as well as just how much you can fit, which limits what you can and can't do. Okay. So we start off with 10 uh, spaces of cone. And uh, normally this would be empty, but I started off filling here with just yeah. some stuff for the game. It's good. Yep. It gives us something to work with. Exactly. So the first resource uh, is honey, which is these yellow cubes, of course. Honey is worth a victory point at the end of the game. It's also what you use to feed your bees with. So you, one honey cube okay. will feed up to two of your workers. If your workers don't eat, they die. Bad news for bees. Okay. Um, and finally, you can use it to take this build wax option down here. Uh, you spend two honey cubes and move this guy over one and increase your comb size. Okay. So this is how you expand your hive. Okay. All right, the next resource is this orange cube here, the pollen, because I mess everything up. Um, the pollen is the only protein bees get in their entire lives. It's what they feed their larvae to grow big and strong, so it's how you get new bees in the game. Okay. Every one of these cubes turns into a new larva uh, at the end of your turn. However, there's an exception, and this is with the one hidden resource in the game, which is your eggs. So the queen lays eggs in every empty cell. We've got three right now, so these three would hatch. However, if we had one more resource in here, now there's only two empty spaces, you have two eggs, you're only gonna get two new bees. Right. So that's how that goes. Final resource is this blue cube here, water. Um, now water is a specialty resource. There are event cards in the game that act as weather effects. And these weather effects will have things on them, say, they'll bump up how many resources you can gather, or maybe they'll make things more difficult or easier to defend. Okay. One of the conditions they have, particularly in summer, because again, summer's a terrible time for a bee, is overheating. So to overheat, or fix overheating, you need to take one bee and one water and take the cool hive action over here, and then you will cool your hive. Okay. If you don't cool your hive, basically it's too hot for brood, all your baby bees die, and you get no new workers that turn. Okay. So bad news. After that, we'll just go down the other actions here. Uh, we have clean bees. So this little guy here is a Varroa mite. He just represents the overall health of your hive. As you take actions such as robbing other bees for honey to steal their resources, or going out to just forage them, this counter goes up the track. Now the first two don't do anything. But when you start getting here, bad things happen. Right, for just your larva. That's right. Every single one of those, one larva is dead. And at the end of the game, uh, during the winter phase, which is an upkeep phase, you lose an adult bee per negative at a time. Okay. So bad news. Robbing and defending I will talk about in just a little bit. Um, requeening, this is a little asymmetry to the game. So there are four queen types. Let me steal yours here for a second so we can see them all. Mm -hmm. This first one is the aggressive queen. Um, she gives you, for every two bees you use to take the rob or defend action, counts as three. Okay. This is the hygienic queen. With her, this guy goes up every other time he should go up instead of every time. Okay. This one is the Swarm's Frequently Queen. I'll explain her in a little bit, because it doesn't make sense to bring it up right now. Yeah. And this one is the Prolific Queen. With her, you get more Every two workers. spaces is... Three bees, exactly. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Let, uh, glad the iconography is working. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, final action that we can take here is Scout. So I'm just going to move this over here. And over here, we have the shared map. So again, the starting off, we're just starting on these two bloom tiles here. I'll explain what those are in a second. Um, but eventually, when you take the scout action, you go and dig in this bag and pull out a new tile. You point where you're going to put it before you see what it is, okay. and then you plunk it down. And okay. that's how you grow the map. Now, um, there are four different tiles in the game. We have the green-blue tile, which is best in the spring season of the game. The uh, yellow-wilt tile, which is best in the summer portion of the game. 
the orange harvest tile, which is best in the fall, and then the wet tile, which is the only tile you can normally get the water resource in the game. So you scout, everything's fine in the summer, which is the first three months of the game. Um, everyone's in their own little island, there's not a lot of player interaction. After that, uh, the bees, there's far fewer resources and they're going to start paying attention to each other more and you can now interact more. So the person who started last in the game is going to combine the map however they want and there's strategic advantage to how they do that. And then you will have a shared map where you can now interact with each other. And now this brings us to swarming. So, I'm going to show your map here, I don't know if you can see this here. We just need I'm to see the top half, we don't need the whole thing. Right. Yep. Okay. So, this comes also with the Swarms Frequently Queen that I gave you. So, with each um, bee that you have here, there's uh, two ways to swarm. The first is having too many workers in your hive. When bees don't think they have space, they're getting out of there, they're making a new home. It's how they reproduce in the wild. So if you look on here, we have these green numbers and these purple numbers. Right. The green numbers are how many bees that you can have with a any queen but this one. Okay. This queen, if you got more than the purple number, you're swarming. Okay. So you have her, you can have up to four bees. I got five. You got five, so half of them rounded down are going to leave. And then you are going to place a swarm tile. He's going to put it here. Okay. You're the purple one, so you're doing this over here to harass me. And because it left you, it becomes a strength two hive. Okay. So this hive now acts and runs on a fairly simple AI that is different for what season of the game you're in. It will harvest these tiles and basically block them with its own workers, and it will also rob us and try to take resources. Okay. All right. The um, final thing to talk about about the actions is just combat. Combat is a simple dice mechanic. You choose how many bees you're going to rob with, and let's say we're going to go with two here. You move into the rob action, and then you roll a d4. So you roll this. I got a four, so I use two bees. I can only do up to two. And okay. then you would steal two of my honey that is now yours. Okay. And, you, and you would earn two victory points for doing that successfully as well. Okay. Um, the game plays in uh, three seasons, as I mentioned, three months per season. And then there is a winter upkeep phase. Uh, yep, right here. Uh, each of these cards get flipped over. So if we go to the first summer, we would just flip this guy over, take the effect on the card and how that changes the game. And then we would carry on until the end of November. Uh, the game can be played in one, two, or three year terms, depending how long you want to play. It takes about 30 minutes per player, and we're also concentrating on solo play as well. Um, right now I've got about 12 different challenges as well as scenarios um, for campaigns designed to do solo play. Um, so there's a lot of replayability in here and interest for, you know, like I said, up to four people. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, is this out now? No, uh, we are going to be at Gen Con, and we'll have a booth there where you can see the game, and then we will be coming out on Kickstarter uh, in uh, September, we're aiming for. September 2018. Yeah. Okay. Matt, thank you very much yes, for showing off Bee Lives to us newbies. Yes. Sure. <laughs>